And by the way, I happen to believe what you guys say. Most of the time I'm thinking a guy that gets tested positive is dirty. In this particular instance, because of the uh, many, many factors, I happen to believe you guys. Because of the uh, many, many factors, I happen to believe you guys. And here are some facts, Dan Raphael. Francisco Vargas was tested in California on April uh, 15. No, I'm sorry, before that. He was tested. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, he was tested on April 15th in California. Test came back negative. He goes to Mexico City on April 16th. His mom makes one of his favorite dishes, which is carne asada, which is with bone, and is is made in broth. He has dinner on Wednesday, and there's leftovers, and he eats on Thursday. Thursday evening, Vada knocks on his door. He gets tested. Okay, and that was on the I believe it was on the 21st, five days later. That test came back positive for Carubido. But here's here's the thing. Okay, I want you to focus on this, Dan Rafael, on the doses as far as how much he tested it, because I did my own research with uh, Victor Conte that I believe is one of more knowledgeable guys, and I just wanted to get his input. He tested back for Carubido 1.3. What does that translate? No. He told me that most laboratories do not even test for anything under 0.20. He was very surprised that Vada picked up 1.3. When I had a conversation with Victor, I asked him, if you have a dirty athlete with him that great period, what should he test? He says, Ralph, any individual that tries to uh, do something deliberate, one pill, he will test 50, 50, 5 all. So he replied, and he said that basically the doses that Francisco showed, it had to be some contaminated uh, food, which was the meat. Since then, Dan Raphael, Francisco was t- tested in Mexico three times right after that. All three tests had came back negative for Curubido. Since then... He has been tested in California two more times, okay? And those tests, we're still waiting for the results because he was tested Sunday morning and Monday afternoon. But rest assured, if he was dirty and doing something deliberate, not only would the doses would have been much higher, but he would have tested positive on the first test when he was in California, which was the 15th. Also, something that Francisco mentioned, and I was in the same boat as he was, I never, I used to hear these stories. Never believed it. Never. But like Francisco said, you don't believe it till it happens to you. And believe me when I tell you, these are facts. I'm glad that it happened because I believe this is not only going to help Francisco, but it's going to help a lot of athletes that are clean. And hopefully, the technology will be there for them to be able to distinguish when somebody does something liberal. So, Ralph, uh, the, the, my, part of the question that I had for him, I'm not sure if there was an answer there, was just, you know, and by the way, I happen to believe what you guys say. Most of the time I'm thinking a guy that gets tested positive is dirty. In this particular instance, because of the uh, many, many factors, I happen to believe you guys. If you want to have some performance-enhancing effects, you should need a considerable amount, so the, the limit for the laboratories to work with is 2,000 picograms, and probably to have a good effect you have to have uh, 9,000 picograms per mil of urine. But the issue is, should we not establish a limit uh, until you have to, to report it positive? So if you are below that limit, you should declare a sample not positive. And that is the big discussion now, especially in legal sense. One molecule is already enough to be positive. Do you tend to believe Canelo's story or what's being put out well, by I Golden do. Boy? I, I do. I do. And, the, and part of the reason is because the director of the water accredited lab in, in Salt Lake City came out and said that, you know, these were trace amounts. And you have to understand that you have trace, and trace is considered parts per million. Then you have ultra trace um, concentrations, which would be in the parts per billion and parts per trillion. So these are way, way down, and the, the cutoff, I think, is, is like two 
parts per trillion. The, the issue here with Canelo is not that he tested positive for trace amounts of, of clenbuterol. Here we are eight weeks out from the fight. But what has he been doing for the last four months? What has Triple G been doing the last four months? Try zero testing. What has Triple G been doing the last four months? Try zero testing. What has Triple G been doing the last four months? Try zero testing. What has Triple G been doing the last four months? Try zero testing. What has Triple G been doing the last four months? Try zero testing. We looked at uh, all the different factors uh, surrounding this particular test. Uh, probably the first uh, factor that we considered was the fact that it was clambuterol that he tested positive for. It was a large problem in Mexico. What one of the experts told us was that that certain quantity that we tested on, that percentage, normally happens when you eat tainted meat. And one day before, and even that same day of the test, of the anti-doping test, we had had meat. Though the practice has been prohibited for years, some Mexican cattle ranchers still use clenbuterol to increase the size of livestock. In recent years, athletes from a number of sports have tested positive for the powerful fat burner with contaminated beef, often eyed as the culprit. Truthfully, it's something that, uh, that until it happens to you, you never think that it's possible, and that's what happened to me. I never imagined that I would do a positive to this testing because I've never used anything prohibited. Vargas passed two random tests administered by VADA on April 15 and 16 while he was still in California. But an April 21 test, taken after he had returned to Mexico, came back positive. This fact, among others, convinced the California Commission to allow the fight to proceed. Mr. Vargas had tested negative just a few days before this flag test, and it was a, um, a low amount, a 1.3 uh, nanograms, I believe, was the, was the level. From the people I've talked to, you need more than that to get a benefit from it. So the low amount, the the fact that Mexico has a problem well documented with clambuterol, all these factors went into the decision, plus we're six weeks out. We had time to verify and ensure the opponent, the public, everybody, this is going to be a fair fight.